Hey guys, it's Brett. Thanks for dropping by my channel. So today I wanted to talk about summer because it is here. It is here with a vengeance and it will be over before you know it. So I wanted to talk today about 10 books to add to your summer reading list that I'll be reading that I think sound like a lot of fun and hopefully you, you will be too. So let's break out the sunscreen and get to it. All right, so uh, the first half of this are some books that have already come out very recently, but that's no reason to think that you can't add them to your list because it is May and uh, most of these have come out um, either just now or, um, you know, very recently. The first is T.J. Newman's Drowning. Um, T.J. Newman, this is kind of a, you've, you might have seen this book, frankly, you're going to see it a lot of places, but she was a flight attendant who uh, was a flight attendant for years and wrote this book called Falling that was about a potential plane crash. Now she's written a follow-up called Drowning, which is about a plane that crashes in the ocean and the um, rescue mission to rescue the 12 people that are trapped 200 feet um, on the ocean floor. Uh, I'm going away next week, so I will not be reading this before um, I get on a plane. However, um, this is already being optioned, made into a movie, as well as her first book is being made into a movie. Everybody that's read it so far has said it is, can't put down, you know, total summer fun thriller of the summer. So that is Drowning by T.J. Newman. Next up, all right, I have been reading this book and it is, for those of you who are on Instagram, it is burning up all over Instagram. Uh, and I would say mostly for good reason. I hope to finish it in the next day or so, which is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Rebecca Yaros, effectively, she, from what I can tell, writes romance novels, but this is a a uh, fantasy book about a um, school that trains young people to become um, dragon riders, effectively. So it's extremely competitive. A lot of people die in the school. Uh, and it's this one young girl. There's romance that ensues, as you would expect. Um, it's a little bit like you know, they've said, and it's true, The Hunger Games. Um, <laughs> strangely to me, meets Avatar because you have to bond with your dragon. The dragon has to pick you. The dragons have personalities. They um, communicate through their minds with the person that they're bonded with. Um, but in a way, it's it's um, it's nothing that you haven't. For those who have read fantasy, it's nothing that you haven't necessarily read before. And yet, and yet, Rebecca Yaros makes a lot of it brand new, and she does put some fun twists in here that I was like, okay, that's interesting. So it's highly um, compulsive reading. It's hard to put down. It's um, really fun for those of you again, again who um, even for people who aren't normally fantasy readers. This could be fun for you. Okay, fourth wing, Rebecca Yaros. If you're looking for a thriller this summer, S.A. Cosby has a new book called All the Sinners Bleed. Um, I love S.A. Cosby. His last book, Razorblade Tears, is being currently made into a movie, also being made into a movie. His first novel, which is Blacktop Wasteland, also phenomenal book. This latest from S.A. Cosby it is about a small town with a black sheriff and a serial killer. That's all I know, so that's all I'm giving you. I'm not going to read you anymore. But everyone that I know that has read it so far or listened to the audio have said it's really fantastic. So completely excited for that for the thriller people out there. The other book that's out currently for thriller people is My Murder by Katie Williams. Um, let me read you the blurb of this. It sounds really fun. What if the murder you had to solve was your own? Lou is a happily married mother 
of an adorable toddler. She's also the victim of a local serial killer. Recently brought back to life and returned to her grieving family by a government project, she's grateful for the second chance. But as the new Lou adapts to her old routines and as she bonds with other female survivors, she realizes that disturbing questions remain about what exactly preceded her death and how much she can really trust those around her. Now, it's not enough to care for her child, love her husband, and do the work she's always enjoyed. She must also figure out the circumstances of her death. Darkly comic, tautly paced, and full of surprises, My Murder is a clever devouring one twist on the classic thriller, My Murder. I'm excited to read it. I don't know what I think about this cover yet. I don't know if it looks too much like... Um, you know, a kind of, hey, this is a cozy, fun mystery, but we'll see. It could, I'm, I'm thinking that it's going to be more than that, but uh, looking forward to reading that. And um, thank you to Riverhead Books for the copy of that. Um, two books that I am both really excited about, um, and they're more of the uh, contemporary comedy, so to speak. One is the new Paul Rudnick, Farrell Covington and the Limits of Style. Um, I love Paul Rudnick. I think he is so hilarious. Um, two years ago, he had uh, a book out called Playing the Palace, which I think lost, um, got lost in the shuffle a little, a little bit because like Red, White and Royal Blue, it was about a... Um, a Broadway actor who ends up getting involved with the Prince of England. Um, but I will say I loved it and thought it was so clever. Laugh out loud funny. I also listened to it on audio. And my pal Michael Yuri of um, Shrinking uh, narrates it. So it's a great, that uh, Playing the Palace is also a great summer read. And the audiobook is fantastic. But this is about a relationship between two men that um, it's devastatingly handsome and insanely rich. Farrell Covington is capable of anything. He's a clear eyed romantic and a steep, but not a snob, self indulgent, yet wildly generous. He's the son of the, one of the country's most powerful and ferociously conservative families, so the world could be his. But when he falls for Nate Reminger, an aspiring writer from a nice Jewish family in Pataquay, New Jersey, Piscataway, 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 New Jersey. <laughs> Whoever is from Piscataway, you can correct me below. The other book that I'm looking so forward to is The Rachel Incident by Carolyn O'Donoghue. Um, I, I want to read you this blurb from Gabrielle Zevin of Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, what she said about it, which is, if you've ever been sure of what to do with your degree in English, if you've ever wondered when the rug buying part of your life will start, if you've ever loved the wrong person or the right person at the wrong time, in short, if you've ever been young, you will love the Rachel incident like I did. It's set in um, Cork, Ireland, uh, and a woman um, and kind of her friends and the foibles that go on. Uh, I just think it looks so good. The kind of perfect, smart summer read. I'm excited about this one. Moving on to a little bit of uh, sci-fi. I think this book looks so cool. And by the way, um, one of my favorite covers this year so far uh, it is The Deep Sky by Yumi Katase. Um, a, a mission into deep space begins with a lethal explosion that leaves the survivors questioning the loyalty of the crew. Um, so I think that's really all you need to know. Um, a little sci-fi action. Interested in that one. Also, cannot, cannot, cannot wait. No Ann Patchett. Tom Lake. They're saying this is Ann Patchett's best book, and I think she's amazing, so I can't even imagine. She wrote this during the lockdown. This is Ann Patchett's kind of homage where she loosely uses the play Our Town as a template, the same way that Ann Napolitano uses Little Women as the kind of reference point for her new book, Hello Beautiful. Um, I don't know much about it beyond that, the Patchett book. 
all I know is like, I'm going to be getting this right away because I'm sure it's going to be just amazing. The last two um, that I want to talk about, one is uh, The Whispers, the new book by um, Ashley Audrain that comes out um, the first week of June as well. Ashley wrote what I thought was an incredibly chilling and powerful novel, but people had very mixed uh, reactions to it, which was The Push, which was um, about a, a woman who she and her husband have a baby and the child seems to basically be the bad seed. Uh, a lot of people felt like there's another book called Baby Teeth and the Baby Teeth is better. I never read Baby Teeth. I thought the push was amazing. It was also um, really uh, elevated what was a great book into an incredible uh, audio book uh, because it was read by Marin Ireland, who is just a brilliant, brilliant actress. And so the combination, anyway, it's it's the push is a great, chilling book. This. Uh, the, the subject of her new one, it just says from the author of The Push, a thriller about four suburban families whose lives are changed when the unthinkable happens and what is lost when good people make unconscionable choices. So uh, it sounds great. So the last book that I want to talk to today is the new book by James McBride called The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store. Um, James McBride uh was the author of Deacon King Kong, as as well as the um, award-winning The Good Lord Bird. So this newest one concerns, it's set in 1972, set in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Um, when a foundation is being built for a new development, a skeleton is found in the bottom of a well. Um, so the book becomes a central mystery of who the skeleton was and kind of the long held secrets between the residents of uh, Chicken Hill, which was kind of run down dilapidated area where immigrant Jews and African Americans lived together. It's basically gonna be about this community that's living on the kind of edge of this white Christian suburbia and what they have to do to survive um, with the secret of who and what happened up there on Chicken Hill slowly gets revealed. So, um, I think this sounds amazing. Can't wait for it. So really looking forward to that. So those are 10 books for summer. I hope some of those are one of those even sounds interesting to you. Let me know um, what you are planning to read this summer. What kind of stuff looks interesting to you? I'll see you again shortly with my um, wrap up of uh, my May books, which certainly veered off from my TBR, but I do have to say like I had a fantastic reading month overall and read so far some of my favorite books of the year. So I'm excited to share that with all of you soon. I hope you're all having a fantastic week and uh, thanks for dropping by.